In this special free five-part mini course, I'm going to show you how to build this custom UX UI design slicer pane inside of Power BI completely from scratch. I'm also going to show you how to build this filter selection bar, how to add tool tips to it, and how to clear the filters directly from the bar. Let's jump in. Now for this free mini course, I've included this blank demo report page so you can follow along with me step by step. Simply click the link in the description of this video to go download this file. I've also included the measures that we're going to be using for this tutorial. So once you're ready to dive in, download your file, open it up, and then insert a blank button. Let's drag the button right over here and open up Format Button, General, Properties. We're going to make the height 40 and the width 135. Open up the padding. Make sure it's zero pixels all the way around. Next, switch over to Button Settings, Shape. Under the default state, we're going to change the shape to a pill. We'll open up Style. Under the default setting, we're going to turn Text On and type the word Filters. We're going to make the font Sago UI semi bold, 11 in size. We're going to change the color to white. For the horizontal alignment, we're going to left align. For the left side padding, we're going to change it to 30. And then we'll change the rest to zero. Then go ahead and make sure icon is on, open it up, change it to custom. We're going to make the icon size 17 pixels. The left side padding is going to be 5. The top padding is going to be 2, and then the right side will be 0, and the bottom will be 0. Next thing you want to do is open up Microsoft PowerPoint and go to Insert, Icons, and find the Filter icon. You can simply type Filter here. Once you find it, you're going to select it, and to change the color to white, and then right-click and Save as Picture. Make sure the Save as Type is SVG. You're going to name it. I named mine icon underscore filters and then just click save. Next, go back to Power BI, click browse, locate that image, click open. Now, if your Microsoft PowerPoint does not have icons, simply go check out my SVG icon video where you can learn how to find an icon similar to this one that we got from Microsoft PowerPoint. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is scroll down and turn the fill on, open it up, lower the transparency to zero, and then change the color to the hex code of 3A5C62. So this dark bluish green color. Keep scrolling down, turn border on, expand it, change the color to white, change the width to 1.5 pixels. And then scroll down to the very end, turn action on, change it to bookmark. And then for bookmark, we're just gonna go with none for now. We're gonna come back in here when we're all done to assign our bookmarks. Now let's scroll back up and change the style state to on hover. Then scroll back down under fill. We're gonna change the color to the hex code of 4D7279. And if you hover over, you can see the effect is taking place here. Just makes the color a little lighter. Now take that button and drag it to the top right corner. And if you want my exact positioning, under properties position, we can see it's 1093 horizontal by 28 vertical, which also happens to be right aligned with the horizontal line directly below it. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is go over to visualizations and insert a card new. Let's go to data, measures. And we're gonna look for the measure called filter info active count. Let's go to format your visual, general properties. We're gonna change the height to 24. We're gonna change the width to 30. I'm going to drag it manually right over here inside of our button. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. 
And I'm going to make the horizontal 1181. And the vertical looks good there at 36. I'll zoom back out to 100%. Click on that, card new. Let's open up padding. And we're going to zero the padding on all four sides. Let's scroll down and open up effects. We're going to turn visual border on. Open it up. We're going to change the color to the hex code of 3A5C62. For the rounded corners, we're going to go with a 20 pixel. And we'll go with a width of one pixel. Let's keep scrolling down. We can turn header icons off. Now let's switch over to the visual settings. Open up layout. We're going to change max card shown to one. Keep scrolling down. Open up padding. Make sure all of the padding is zero, except for the bottom. For the bottom, we're going to go with a one. Keep scrolling down. Open up call out values and change the font to Sago UI Bold. The size, we're going to go with 11. The color, we're going to go with hex code of 333333. We're going to middle align it. We're going to open up label. Space between label, we're going to change to a zero. And then we're going to go back up and turn label off. And keep scrolling down and open up cards. We're going to change the padding to custom. And then we're going to zero the padding out on all four sides. Keep scrolling down and turn background off and border off. Zoom in real quick and take a look. All right, I think that looks really good. So we'll go back to 100%. This leads to my pro UX UI tip number one, provide feedback. We can see here in this completed working model that when we select filters from the slicer pane, our filter button here at the top will show the number of filters that we have applied. So this helps our users understand the context of the data at a glance as we're providing instant clarity. So let's break down this measure real quick to see how it's working. If we look here, we can see the first step is to create this virtual table. In the virtual table, we have two columns. First column will contain these defined text labels. And then the second column will contain true or false, depending on if these particular fields related to these text labels is filtered or not. And the last step is to check to see if is filtered is true or false. If it's true, then it's going to return a one. If it's false, it's going to return a zero. We use SUMX to sum up that column. Now, if you look closely here, we can see that it says value two, which can be a little confusing. So let me show you what this virtual table looks like as an actual table. It names the headers as value one and value two. So when we reference value two, we're referencing the second column, which would be the is filtered check. And this third column I just temporarily added here to show you visually what we're doing here. Essentially, it's just looking over at value two to see if it's true or false. And if it's true, it's going to add a one here. Again, that's some X that we have in our measure. We'll sum up that column. All right, so now it's time to start building our slicer pane, which leads me to my pro UX UI tip number two. Sketch out your designs. Sketching out your designs, also known as wireframing in advance, is going to help you establish a clear plan by defining consistent spacing, alignment, and layout, all before building in Power BI. This is going to ensure your design is intentional right from the start. This is also going to save you time from having to go back and forth performing trial and error. So it's always a smart decision to wireframe prior to just jumping right in and building. All right, so let's go ahead and open up PowerPoint. Once you open it up, go to Insert, Shape, and select Rounded Rectangle. We're going to make the rectangle 600 pixels for the height, so type 600px. And then for the width, you're going to type 395px, and then click Enter. On the top left corner, you're going to see a yellow circle. You're going to left click and hold, 
drag it all the way to the left, and then slowly drag it in a little bit to the right. We're just trying to round the borders there a little bit. Now while you have the shape selected, go to Shape Outline, More Outline Colors, and we'll change the hex code to D9, 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 and then click OK. Let's go to Shape Fill and select Gradient. I'm going to go with this top right to bottom left selection. Now let's right click on the shape, click Format Shape, open up Fill, and you're going to see these three stops. Now you're not going to adjust the stops, we're just going to change the color. So the first one is going to be white, the second one is going to be white, and then the third one, we're going to go with a hex code of F2, F2, F2. Now let's go ahead and select the shape and go to Shape Effects, Shadow. I'm going to go with this bottom left offset shadow. And then under Format Shape and Effects, I'm going to open up Shadow and I'm going to change the transparency to 80%. I'm going to change the blur to 6 points, and I'm going to change the distance to 10. Next, we're going to right-click on our shape and click Save as Picture. Make sure your Save as Type is a PNG file. You're going to name it, and then you're going to save it. Next, go back to Power BI, click Insert, Image. You're going to find your image that you just made, click Open. Go ahead and make that image as large as you can, just like that. Then go to Format Your Image, General, Properties. You're going to change the height to 600, and the width is going to be 395. Then you're going to go to Padding, and zero out the padding on all four sides. Let's go ahead and switch to Image, Style. We'll change the image size to Fit. And you'll take that image and drag it over to the right. Hold Control, select a line right above it, and you'll go to Format, Align, to the right. Click out. And that leads me to my pro UXUI tip number three. Use shapes first in Power BI. Now if you're trying to build a slicer pane from scratch, I would suggest just simply inserting a shape and then start to place your slicers on the shape from there. Because it's easier to change the size of the shape, all depending on the number of slicers you need to put on it, in the particular order and placement that they need to be. Now, once you have the right size, you can then recreate that shape in PowerPoint if you'd like. Now, you don't need to create your background shapes in PowerPoint for your slicer panes. I just choose to do it because it gives you a little extra flexibility. For example, if we wanted to add a subtle gradient like we did right here. If you don't care about that, you can do this background right inside of Power BI. I'll show you how to do it here real quick. Just go to Insert, Shape, Rounded Rectangle. And go to Format Shape and Shape. We're going to change the rounded corners to four. For the style, we'll go with white. For the border, we'll go with this light gray. Make it 0 0.5 pixels. Scroll down and turn Shadow on. Open it up. For the Shadow Blur, we're going to go with 70 pixels. And for the position, we're going to go with bottom left. And the last thing we'll do is just manually resize our shape to the shape of our background that we made in Microsoft PowerPoint. So as you can see, it's pretty close, right? Very subtle difference. Again, only that gradient that we added in PowerPoint just to give it that extra little visual element in a subtle way. But as you can see, once you create this, it's so simple to resize it in order to figure out exactly what size you need it to be for your individual slicers. All right, so congratulations, you've finished part one. Go ahead and check out part two when you're ready to continue building out this slicer pane. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that notification button. And once you finish this free mini course, if you're looking to take your Power BI design skills to the next level, feel free to check out my 14-day self-paced premium Power BI UX UI design course. There's a link in the channel description shown here.